Hey, so what up guys, Mac here with Drag Tech. I'm here bringing you probably the best settings for the GoPro Hero 8 Black. And if you didn't know, I got this camera back in December 2019. Of course, I was late to the game because I had very bad experiences with GoPro cameras of the past. Uh, but anyway, I got this camera and I took the risk buying it. Hopefully, it didn't have any issues and it didn't really give any issues except for the app. But anyway, the camera to me basically is much better especially comparing it to the hero 6 black which i owned previously that was a total mess to me okay so guys i'm going to show you right now probably the best settings so i'm going to power on the camera so you can see right here camera is booting up so i'm going to show you the video settings because i think these settings actually works for all situations so right here on the main screen itself, you can actually see that I'm on the standard mode. I've actually configured it to 2.7K 60p. And I have actually my ISO right here because this camera has a really, really small sensor. And I mean, you don't want to crank up the ISO anything above 800 because there will be a lot of noise. And I mean really a lot of noise, especially if you film in 60p. The reason I film in 60 frames per second is that I like to slow down my footage in post i mean at least i have the flexibility of tuning and tweaking my footage and 2.7k why not 4k because 4k the files are pretty big and 2.7k is basically like slightly smaller but it's much more easier to transfer over to my iphone in this case i mean the transfer speeds are much faster as compared to previous generations of gopro but i mean I do like it a little smaller and 2.7k is like the sweet spot especially for all the settings that i'm going to show you in a moment so i have my iso right here in daylight settings on 60p i like to keep my iso at 400 or even lesser 100 to 400 roughly around that but of course 400 would be the sweet spot and for night time especially during the sunset hours and Basically night time, I like to keep it around 800. Nothing goes above 800 for me because I find that 800 ISO is like the sweet spot. So I like to keep my ISO down right here because in case I do have to pull out my camera and take a quick video, I can actually tweak my ISO right here in the main screen itself. Okay, right here I'm using linear mode as well because I think linear is like the best field of view because it's not too wide doesn't have the fish eye effect as compared to super view you can see right here very fish eye effect and then there's the white which is okay but of course in terms of video you like something where it's very straight there are no curves at the corners so you can see it's very straight you can see the boxes right here so i think linear is the best and if you do go to narrow i mean you're cropping in too tightly into the sensor and i wouldn't recommend that because you introduce a lot of noise into the video so linear is definitely the sweet spot so anyways i do have my toggle right here so if i do wish to change it i can just do it on the fly so i can switch to super view and back to linear for example so it'll be it's a very nice setup right here i would definitely recommend it because of course it's personal preference but if you're like me and you do basically basic video everyday video i think this is the best settings and also there's also zoom right here so it's basically something like cropping into the sensor it is cropping to the sensor i should say and if you really do need it then you use it but of course generally i do not really recommend this at all okay so let's go into the settings itself okay so right here i have standard activity cinematic and slow-mo i mean these four options are basically more than enough for me so in the standard settings let's go right into the standard settings you can see I have my resolution and frames per second 2.7 k60 and i have my lens in linear as what i showed you before and also hyper smooth in high because anything above that basically crops in too much and later i'll show you there's some micro jitter as the sky goes darker i mean as you go into a lower light situation so just keep it in high for me that is the perfect amount of stabilization generally so i would recommend that and you can see low light is not available in 2.7 k60 
I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I don't want the low light function anyway because you definitely have a lot of noise. And I like controlling my ISO on this camera especially. So you can see my zoom is at one time. You can see my clips are off. I mean, you can even on that, it doesn't really matter. But I like to keep that, keep that off. Okay, let's move down right here. You can see ProTune. I have my ProTune on. And you can see my bit rate is high. Okay, this is very important, especially if you're buying the GoPro Hero 8. I mean, you buy this camera for the improved bit rate. This is at 100 megabytes per second. So you can see it's in high. Yes, it eats up a bit more storage, but if you consider the quality that you're getting with the footage, I mean, it's undeniably better. And you can see my shutter speed is also in auto. I mean, let the camera do its thing, right? Because you're controlling ISO anyway. So you can see the exposure value compensation, I keep it at zero. Of course, some of the YouTubers do recommend to keep it at negative one. So you can do more, maybe brightening the shadows or some sort in post. But of course, I don't want to do too advanced. I like to keep my footage simple. I mean, this is a simple camera. You just you mount it on your, in this case, my scooter. Later, I'm going to show you that video. Uh, or you just take it around. You wear this, you wear the strap. I mean, you want it something simple this, that you can just shoot on the fly. So you just keep it at zero. I mean, you're not going to do much post-processing later. Um, the white balance, I kept it as auto because I think the white balance is pretty good on this camera. So I think it works. ISO minimum at 100 and maximum at 800. This is very, very, very important because you don't want the camera to decide. Because if the camera does decide, if it goes to a really, really low light area, especially at 60 frames per second, you crank up the ISO all the way up to 6400, if not mistaken. And of course, you introduce too much grain to your, to your video. I mean, that's not what you want. So I think this is the sweet spot. Really do take note of the ISO settings and also the bit rate. Other than that, basically, just leave it. Sharpness is at high because... I mean, as I, I told you earlier, right, I like to use this on the fly. So keeping my sharpness at high just basically makes the cut. So the color is GoPro color, which is basically enough, I guess. But of course, a bit too much in the shadows. It crushes the shadows a bit too much. So, But anyway, that doesn't really bother me. Because anyway, I'm using this mainly for action, not really for like, you know, cinematic footage and stuff. So raw audio is off. Because I don't want a separate file. Wind is auto. All these settings you will be able to hear. Especially the wind noise when I'm riding a scooter. Because I'll be riding at approximately 115 kilometers per hour. And you know at that speed, the wind is pretty pretty bad. You can see stereo mics are on. Shortcuts, you can see right here. This is what my shortcuts are. So you can just pause it and probably do the same settings for yourself. So... Basically, that is it, the perfect setting for standard video. Okay, if I'm riding my scooter, for example, I will switch it to activity mode. And that's where I will get the super view mode. So, same resolution, same, same frames per second, but the lens is in super view. The reason I put it in super view is that I can get more in my frame. I mean, because I'm not using a chesty or something... So I, I mount it on my handlebar itself. So I use super view so I can get a way wider view of uh, the surroundings. I mean, usually you use that in action spots. Hyperspoof on. That's the maximum you can go for super view, which is uh, good enough. But however, as the light gets dimmer, there will be more jittering in the video. Okay, so you can see low light, zoom, clips, basically the same settings. Even for the Pro Tune as well, you can see bit rate is high, shutter is auto, and oh, you can see right here, everything's the same. So if you follow the same settings, you'll be good to go. So the, basically, what I changed was the lens or the view, I should say. So it became super view, and that's about it. Of course, my settings are the same. So I have my ISO on the top right. Set at 800 because I took a video during sunset, so I had to use 800 because if I use 400 at 60 frames per second, it'd be super dark. Basically, that is it for activity. Nothing much. And of course, cinematic, I'm basically doing the same thing. I don't really need four options, actually, to be honest. I just need standard activity and probably slow-mo, which I don't really use. So the slow-mo footage is like this. Let me show it to you right here. So you can see 1080p 
at 240 frames per second which is the sweet spot i mean you can go to let me see what you can go to i can do at other other setting but i will definitely have to make some compromises with the resolution so i think 1080p for slow-mo uh, is good enough i don't really use this mode anyway so i like this and i keep it on white right here it's on white and my hyper smooth is on so you can see clips are off i don't really need the clips because i think it is unnecessary for my use but of course you can tweak it to your liking you can see i totally off everything because i basically didn't really bother about this mode much okay so i'm going to show you some sample footage with this camera right here following the activity settings because I will be mounting this on my my e-scooter and you be the judge on the test footage because I think that in daylight yes the stabilization works perfectly the hyper smooth is like on point but when it gets darker that's when you start to see a lot of micro jitter so the first clip I'll be showing you is actually shot in midday so that will be perfect for testing out hyper smooth I would advise not to use boost especially if you're using linear mode because boost really crops in too much and I think the crop defeats the purpose of having a GoPro I mean if you're going to use that crop might as well just grab your iPhone 11 or something to shoot that would really really be much better in fact but because this camera is so small and you want to use it for action yeah don't use boost it's just marketing fluff okay so I hope you guys enjoyed this video do let me know in the comments below what you think about the footage i think this guide is basically more than enough definitely update your camera to the latest firmware It'll definitely fix some issues and also will make it compatible with the medium mod i'm not sure whether i'll be getting my hands on the medium mod though but anyways that concludes our video if you haven't subscribed to this channel hit the subscribe button and enable notifications so you can get notified on the next video which i post okay so that's all for this video hope you guys enjoyed the footage and I'll see you guys in the next video.